Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to just quickly show you how to, the professional version of the Flip Normals Creature Kit is working. If you've loaded in our custom UI, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a collection of the, br the general brushes you'll use, so matte caps, and this is where all the magic happens. This is a collection of around 170 customly sculpted brushes from eyes, ears, beaks, tails, you name it. This guy here, he was uh, created from one of the base meshes, which follows along with this tutorial. And pretty much everything here is just created straight from one of these uh, the supplied brushes, such as the ears, uh, the eyeballs, the, um, the nose, teeth, mouth, everything here is pretty much just drag and drop onto the model. Same here as well. Everything here is just from a generic base mesh, which follows along with the, with, with the package. We have a different character here. This is the same deal, straight from one of the base meshes and just drag and drop the, um, the desired brush you want, such as a horn, uh, this here is a tooth, it's an ear, general eye, mouth, teeth, some fur, which is here. So this is an incredibly intuitive and quick way of doing. Yeah, one thing that we realized once we started sculpting ourselves was the fact that you could start using different base meshes or different uh, brushes to do different things like using the teeth to give spikes on, on his yeah, This on his is a chin. shark tooth, I believe, here. <laughs> and you can use them for very different things. Here's a little pimple brush as well. And you can just get very interesting results. More shark teeth up here, I believe. Yeah, so experimenting with the brushes is, I think, going to be very powerful. Yeah, exactly. Uh, same with this guy here as well. Uh, the abs here are pretty much straight up just dragged out from the anatomy. Uh, we have uh, shark teeth here. We have uh, a general peck set. We have a scapula and clavicle, and we have tons of, tons of general stuff. So some really good fundamental stuff that you can drag out straight on the base meshes to get some defined bony landmarks and then you know start sculpting on top of those. Yes, exactly. So one of the main advantages here is obviously that you can create these kind of things very quickly. But another big thing is that you can, you can experiment with different designs really fast as well. Let's take this little guy here. Mr. Nice Blind Troll. <laughs> and what we do here is he's missing, he's missing eyes, noses, and ears. And I'm just going to show you real quick how to, uh, how to get very different results incredibly quickly. Yeah, you might say, we've prepared something from home. Yeah, so <laughs> cheat, a, cheat a little bit here. <laughs> so first thing, uh, I'm just going to give him some ears. If you loaded our interface, you can just go down to the ear icon. And here we can just drag out a couple of different ears. Alternatively, you'll find our, our brushes, you know, under B for brush and then F for the flip normals brushes. Yes. So they're all there accessible. Whatever you prefer. So you can just drag out some brushes really quickly. This is one of my personal favorite ones, the goblin one. Yeah, it's interesting to see, like, if you drag out a horse ear versus a goblin ear or a thug ear, it's, it's a very different look you yeah, get, exactly. like, instantly. Like we've talked about before, I mean, sculpting an ear that's this detailed easily half an hour, maybe an yes. hour to get something that looks really yeah, exactly. nice. And this, you just dragged out four different ears in like 10 seconds. Yeah. So it's an incredible design tool. Like you can just really experiment with this and try out different things. I mean, an ear might not always be an ear. You know, an ear can be something else. I you mean, can I use this as a shoulder pad, you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. you want to. You can make some weird stuff with this. I'm really going to be interested to see what people create in terms of like really interesting silhouettes, yeah, where exactly. they really push the mesh to, to how far it can go. So let's try an eye as well. Just hit the eye brush. And here we can try um, the human eyes. Just drag and drop them in. We can try the cat one. Elephant. These are all very distinct feels to them. Exactly. So you can just very quickly get very different characters. And of course, you can always just keep sculpting on these guys as, as you see fit afterwards. Well, this is a starting point more than end result, if anything. Yeah, the way I see this go is that people load in the base meshes, they start dragging things out, dynamesh it, sculpt some more, drag out more things, yeah. and then just keep working on it. Yeah, exactly. And then we can add a nose to this under the nose one. We have a lot of cool ones here as well, like this one is pretty nice, skull. We have a human one, which works best for humans. <laughs> Looks a bit weird on a troll. <laughs> a little goblin one. The bear one is really cool. The bear one is really like a very generic nose. It's a very versatile animal nose in general. Yeah, exactly. So let's just let's just pin this guy to to the the canvas here, waiting Shift S for snapshot, and let's just undo this. So now we can just do a whole different thing here. 
Let's give him um let's do actually skull nose here. Then we can choose ears. And let's give him some bat ears. Enable symmetry by hitting the X key. And now we can just drag out some uh, some different ears. And now we can do the same with eyes as well. Just the human eyes as opposed to the dragon eyes. And you can just see it right away. It's a very different creature. And this this iteration here takes you a few seconds to do. Yeah, it's interesting. Like the one on the left has a little more of an aggressive feel, probably because of the goblin ears. The one yeah. on the right is a lot softer. Yeah. So you can get incredible variation here really quickly. This is something I'll be using in production as well. This is amazing if you have an art director who wants just to see different versions. Because traditionally, you just can't sculpt this quickly. Like, no matter how good you are, you can't sculpt these ears in this amount of time. No, and I mean, where vectored brushes set themselves apart from traditional alphas is that we're able to get these really intricate shapes with overhangs, yeah. underhangs, and things that go into other things. Yeah. I think that's why it's so powerful. Yeah, exactly. So this is just showing on an older existing character, but how do you use this from scratch? The way I prefer to do this is to go to the, the base meshes which you find just in the in in the zip fold. And you can just pick and choose from these. Uh, the top ones here are different eyes. Like uh, this is a cute one. You have a cat eye, human eye. Uh, this is one of this is one I use the most actually the bust. We have a generic female, we have generic human, we have a more gorilla style. An ogre. This is where I sculpted the um, the cave troll from. And just a few different kind of characters. You have to have a dinosaur in a pack. That's that's just mandatory. <laughs> we had a talk about that, and Henning convinced me by just I mean, it's a dinosaur. The dinosaur. You gotta, you have, gotta have a dinosaur. Gotta have a dinosaur. So we have a dinosaur. We have a dinosaur. <laughs> so what you can do with this is I prefer to just hit the clone button. You can also just hit Make PM or Polymesh 3D, and this will just clone it and put it up here. There are no sub adventure levels on this, so you just have to hit uh, Control D a few times. And up to around 2 million, that's fine. And now you can start by just trying some different things out here. So you can, for instance, just start with dragging out some eyes here. But what I prefer to do, to do first is to make a little foundation. This can be done using the anatomy one, the anatomy brush. And here we have a nice little thing called eyes. Uh, we can, uh, where you can drag out essentially just some skeletal features. We, um, there is a kind of a problem though with this because symmetry is on and it's going to give you this weird result. So the way I'm going around this is by disabling symmetry by going down here or by hitting the X key. And then you can just drag it out. Yeah, sort of roughly line it, line it up in the middle yeah. what, with symmetry active and then just disable it, drag it out. Exactly. Uh, the problem is now it's not actually symmetrical now. Like now it's going to be slightly off. One side is going to be slightly higher than the other. So we have a little button here called, mir called mirror and weld, which is just going to mirror from the left side to the right side. Problem is if I'm doing that right right away, you're going to see a little message saying that this has multiple subdivision levels. So uh, we've conveniently included a little button here, which says delete higher and delete lower. So now you can just delete all the subdivision levels and you can just mirror and weld to your heart's content. And you just saw a little, a little thing happening there. And that's, that's it, really handy little thing. Enable symmetry again, because most things will, will, uh, will rely on symmetry here. Then we have cheekbones. This is kind of like to, to make the full set of like the eyes here, just so it kind of fits the skull. And now you just have a little foundation here. You're probably gonna have to use something like the clay buildup, which you can find over here in, on the left-hand side. I personally prefer to change this to alpha 06 or just no alpha. And then you can just start to like refine a little bit here. Then we can um, then we can start to add more skeletal features to this. I'm still not done with the anatomy brush. You can add a little chin to this. Uh, same thing, hit the X key and just drag it out. And now you can hit uh, mirror and weld. And um, then you can start to just add specific facial features to this, such as eyes and noses and whatever you want. I'd pretty much just start off with uh, just dragging out some things here. Honestly, just trying out, seeing what works, seeing kind of what I want. So let's just try with a thug ear for now. And now you can just you can just kind of experiment with what kind of character you want. At this point, I don't really know what I'm going for. I'm just trying something out. But maybe now he's a bit like a brute brute character. So we can just see if we can if we can do do something with that. Yeah, and and, and small adjustments like placing 
your brushes on different parts of the mesh is really going to change the look and feel very much of so. the character. If you, if you do it from this and you do that and you do this as well, very different, very different character right away. Yeah. So we can just drag out the thug ear. And then we can try out some eyes. We already have, have a foundation here now. I'm just going to smooth this out real quick here. Uh, the eyes and and the eyes, noses and mouth generally work best in flat planes. That's where they've been sculpted from. So let's go into the eyes and uh, let's choose elephant eyes. I like the elephant eyes because they look a bit like yeah, they look a bit uh, nice. <laughs> they just, they just, they're just just nice eyes, <laughs> soft and nice <laughs> eyes. <laughs> they just look a bit nice. You can also try if you're doing crazy characters, just trying more eyes. Certain characters have that. If you're doing something really alien, you can just experiment with that. Yeah, I think that's that's again one of the super strengths. Super strengths. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good word. <laughs> this this tool is it just allows you to experiment like yes, crazy. Exactly. So again, disable symmetry by hitting the X key or the nice little friendly button here, and now we can choose something like uh, the old sad mouth. I really like the old sad mouth. Uh, by enabling symmetry, you can kind of see where the symmetry, the center point is, and then you can just disable it again. You can just drag it out like that. I'll, I'll wait with mirroring it because now I'm going to add a nose as well to it. The list here is also alphabetical, so that should just make sense where it is. We can add a uh, bat nose to this. The classic bat nose to classic a human face. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this doesn't that work that well because it's uh, it has an angle here. So if we just enable Symmetry again, and now we can just sculpt this guy down. By holding it down the Alt key, we can just flatten this guy out a little bit. So disable Symmetry again, and let's just make a nose. We can try the Bat Nose again. And we, now we can see it works a lot better. And then we can do uh, Mirror and Weld. And now we can have a nice symmetrical character again. One of the things that I found is so cool with this pack is when we've played around with it, we've been able to very quickly make characters or some interesting designs that I haven't really seen a lot before. Yeah. Just because, I mean, I would never think to drag out a lot of these shapes or do these shapes on, on a face or on the body. As an example, let's do that. <laughs> you can get very interesting characters right away. I'll, uh, be, at this stage, I'll just start blocking out some, some more facial features here. Th these, are, these are things we can't really add into a brush, and you just have to know some basic human anatomy for this. Just so you get some, just some plane changes in the face. Yeah, and I think it's, it, it's not even that, you know, let's say, let's say you, you're not super versatile with, when it comes to, to sculpting, or you don't know anatomy too well right now. But I think the tool is sort of, it's useful for everyone. Yeah. It's super useful for us where we are, um, with what we do in terms of, you know, creature modeling and sculpting, but it's also very useful for people that have been sculpting just for a little bit and they want to take their designs to the next level. They yeah, can exactly. really start, start to experiment with, you know, different designs really quickly. Yeah. The way I'm using this often as well is pretty much, it's like, you're just putting down some um, some dots on a piece of paper and you're just connecting the dots. Like all the sculpting I just did here, that's just connecting the dots. The design hasn't really really changed. It's just been refined a little bit. Yeah, because we put down the bony landmarks, you know, in front of the face, we have something to build off of already. Yeah, exactly. So then we can add a horn to this because every every character you do, it needs it needs horns, guys. That's that's just a fact. And when you have a horn pack, you might as well. You might as well. <laughs> uh, then we have a horn base. This is actually kind of cool. This is just to make just keep a little base for the horn, as you might have guessed. We can drag out one. This is, this one is really cool. This is one you can do just crazy stuff with. You can place it in different parts of the face as well. This is kind of like the characters from John Carter from mm, Mars. Yeah. So very quickly you can just get interesting designs. Uh, we also added a broken horn here as well. So if you want to have like one horn here and then uh, you have a... It's just so there is some asymmetry into the end character right away. Uh, one I like to do, use as well is uh, we have a, we have teeth brushes. So one is an insert brush, which it, which simply it allows you to s separate them into different sub tools afterwards. That this is great for actual teeth. One I prefer to use for like breakup is actually the regular the vector brushes of the teeth one. 
Yeah, surprisingly, the vector brushes of the teeth aren't as good for teeth as the insert meshes. <laughs> yeah. These are very good for spiky surfaces. They're very good for spiky <laughs> surfaces. So this is one which is really cool. You can just very quickly just get a lot of cool variation in it. I also really like to use the, the shark the shark teeth. We have three shark teeth because you need three shark teeth, guys. I mean, we have a T-Rex. Why, yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, I prefer to, with these to just lower the intensity a little bit. And you can just get, get some interesting shapes here. So if you just keep sculpting with this and just trying out different different iterations of your design, you can very quickly get some very cool characters. Next up, I want to quickly show you how I'm using this for the, um, the bodies as well. So let's choose human generic for this. This is exactly what you think it is, generic human. This can be used for anything if you're going for something humanoid. Again, hit the clone button, and now you can just go here. Subdivide the model up a few times. And I'll start here as well with the anatomy one. So some cool stuff here is we have kneecaps, elbows, pecs, scapulas, etc. So let's just start with um, so let's start with the same thing as before. Let's start with the cheekbones. Enable symmetry. And you can just quickly block in some cheekbones with this. Disable symmetry again. And use the eyes. I'm just gonna place them approximately one to me. Then we can choose um, a scapula. This one is really nice because this is the scapula is kind of the secret to the, the back anatomy. <laughs> yeah. Notice that we it's not it's not showing the entire scapula shape. It's just showing where where it would, sh it would go through the skin. So you can now easily just add muscle on top of this. We have a little clavicle. Just drag out like this. We have some pecs, which you can quickly drag out. We have some hips. Elbow. This is more of a creaturey elbow. It has a, way more of, a, of an actual spike than a regular human elbow. Yeah, like a regular human elbow is just kind of blobby and boring. Yeah, exactly. We just want this creature pack. Let's it's make just, it spiky. It's the creature pack. You don't, you don't want a regular elbow. No. But a regular knee is fine. A regular <laughs> knee is perfectly fine. You don't want a spiky <laughs> knee, guys. I mean, you could also use the, the elbow one for the knee, say. So you have like As a spiky knee. It's not a, and yeah. then we have uh, some stomachs as well. These are pretty nice. You have, uh, this is more like an alien stomach. Then we have uh, more like regular. This is kind of what we saw with the creature before. So, so quickly you have a base to start from. I mean, this is in no way the end result, but it's it just means you're gonna save some time. You have some bony landmarks now. Now you can just start to, to just kind of place the anatomy where you want it. And uh, you have some, some general starting points for your anatomy which is really helpful. Yeah, but like including the, something like the clavicle and the scapula, we can already, like we see here, place the deltoid really exactly. well instead of like guessing where it, yeah. it ends and begins. Yeah, it's just a lot easier because then you can just, you can put them down the traps, approximately where they are. You can put down some bony landmarks and just generally have a, have a starting point for the sculpt. Like I've never been able to concept as quickly as, as I can now with this kit, yeah. just because it allows me to experiment a lot more. Yeah. Usually when you're sculpting, you you even even if you're concepting, you're not like limited to one thing, but it's kind of like you're spending maybe 10, 20 minutes on one shape, yeah. on one part of the body. Like, oh, okay, that took some time, maybe I'll keep that. Whereas with this, you can just go crazy. Yeah. Like in, in, in a span of 10 seconds, you can have created three very distinct shapes, right? Yeah. Very, very true. Like with this kind of stuff, if, if I'd sculpted a character to this level here, I probably wouldn't have just replaced the eyes and ears because it takes too long. Yeah, like once, you, once you've once you decided on some ears, the like yeah. ears are an intricate shape. You'd be like, ah, okay, those ears are probably fine. Yeah. I mean, you might, you know, stretch them a little bit, but you wouldn't change the design or like, no, of them a lot. But now you can drastically change it. So that's pretty much it for the creature kit. We hope you find this to be as useful as we find it and that you can create some really cool designs. Yeah, and if you create something with it, uh, let us know so we can have a look at, at all of your awesome creations. We'd love to see what you're doing with it. Definitely.